What's up everyone, Luke here from Solid State Logic and today we're deep diving SSL 360 Link. Since UC1's launch, you've been asking us to open up our controllers to allow you to get hands-on with your favorite third-party plugins. And now with 360 Link, we can map UC1's encoders and buttons to any of your favorite plugins parameters with our easy mapping tool, or pick from a selection of pre-mapped factory settings available for a selection of popular channel strips all ready to go. You'd also be pleased to know that 360 Link is absolutely free to use and isn't linked to owning a UC1 either. So by simply downloading the plugin, you're all set to use 360 Link in your sessions without any licenses, additional authorization processes, or even an iLock account. In addition to this, by using 360 Link, you'll not only get exceptional tactile control of your plugins with your UC1, but also by using Link with 360's plugin mixer, you can extend the controls of your connected UF1 and UF8s with all of your favorite plugins laid out like a large format analog console, giving quicker access to multiple parameters and speeding up your workflow. So, before we take a look at 360 Link, first you're going to need to update SSL's 360 and all associated 360 powered plugins. So please follow the next steps carefully in order to get 360 Link up and running and you'll be enjoying hands-on control with all your favorite plugins in no time. Before we can dive into using SSL Link in our sessions, first we'll need to download 360 Link update SSL 360 to version 1.7, and also update all of the 360 powered channel strips, BusComp2 and SSL meter plugins. We can do all of this by opening up SSL's Download Manager, available from the Solid State Logic's website's download section, then follow the instructions on screen to install 360 Link and update SSL 360 and all the associated plugins to their latest versions. Once we've done this, we then need to jump into SSL's 360 and update the firmware of any connected controllers that are attached. Once they're all updated, we're ready to jump over to our DAW and begin working with 360 Link. So now we've installed 360 Link and everything else is up to date, we can jump into our DAW and load up 360 Link in the same way we would use any other 360 powered channel strip. Simply instantiate the plugin on our channel and then 360 Link's GUI will open up. As you can see, Link begins as a blank slate. So to begin, we need to hit the click to load dialog box, which will open up the plugin library. When we first use 360 Link, this menu will be empty. So we need to scan our plugin folders to access all available plugins for us to load. Simply hit Scan Plugins to populate our library and wait for Link to finish the scan. Whilst we wait for that, it's worth noting that 360 Link hosts the VST3 versions of your plugins, so make sure you've got the VST3s of your favorite plugins already installed, and rescan your plugin library in 360 Link every time you install a new plugin to keep your library up to date. Once we've finished scanning the library, we'll now see all the available plugins that we can select to be controlled. Within the library window, you'll see a few different columns with the name, format, category, manufacturer, and profile type listed across the top. You'll also notice the star column, where we can select the star next to any plugin we wish to add to our favorites list that will be available from the drop-down menu in the GUI. You'll also see the default column, where if we select this next to the name of the plugin, we can set this as the default plugin that 360 Link will use when we first open a new instance. Once we've decided the plugin we wish to use on this channel, we simply need to double click on the name and now the GUI will open up next to 360 Link, where we can begin to explore the plugin control settings. <music> 360 Link comes with a selection of factory mapping for existing SSL style channel strips, such as Waves EV2, SSL E and G channels, CLA Mix Hub, UA's SSL E channel strip, Brainworks SSL 9000J, 4000E and 4000G channels, Harrison's Fast Track, and Slate Digital's VMR with SSL modules. I've got Waves EV2 here and I can already start manipulating the UC1 hardware to control my plugin as we have a factory map all ready to go. And if you look at the GUI, this is now moving in perfect alignment with the controls from my UC1 hardware. We have map controls here for every part of the channel strip section of the UC1 and each encoder and button press is in perfect sync with a third party channel strip. If I click on the cogwheel next to the plugin name, we can open up the configuration window to the right. 
and see how these controls are already mapped. You'll also see at the top of this window that we have factory map selected. If I unlink a parameter to make a change, you'll notice I'm immediately put into user mapping mode. I can assign parameters by simply moving the UC1 control I wish to map, then by clicking on the parameter I wish to link. We can do this for every parameter, and now this will automatically be saved as a user preset for this plugin, ready for the next time we open this plugin. But as EV2 maps so perfectly with the UC1, let's switch back to the factory mapping for now. You'll also have the option to add six quick access mappings from the bottom right window for controls that might not naturally fit with the UC1's layout. These can be linked to the plugin in the same way as before by clicking on the plugin, then selecting the quick access button in the link GUI. We can then access these quick access buttons on the hardware by locating them in the extended functions menu, where we can also access further parameters not on the UC1's layout, such as comp mix, pre and mic pre that can be assigned to control parameters in the 360 link plugin. It's worth noting that some controls in the extended menu, such as solo, cut, pan and width controls, aren't mappable as they pertain to the DSP controls of 360 Link in the same way that our other 360 enabled channel strip plugins allow for pan, width, solo and mutes of the plugin output. In a similar way, the fader control will be defaulted to a fader level of Link's output unless it's been pre-mapped to a plugin's inbuilt fader like we have here with EV2. This gives us a uniform output control across all our 360 channel strips. As a final option in the 360 Link GUI, You'll also see at the top of the configuration window under Global that we can select if the hosted plugin GUI will automatically open when we open 360 Link, making it quicker to access the hosted plugin when adding Link to your tracks. Whilst 360 Link is perfectly set up to control our channel strips, we can also add mapping to any plugin within our session, giving us hands on control of every part of our mix. A plugin I use often is Soothe 2, and by adding a custom map with 360 Link, I can now get fully hands-on control. So in this section, we'll now walk through the process of adding custom mapping for our UC1. So, to set up these controls, all we need to do is select User in the Mapping section, and then we can easily begin to add our custom mapping to the plugin in a variety of different ways. We can click on a parameter in the hosted plugin window to select it, then click on the control parameter in 360 Link to assign the controls. Or we can select the control parameter in Link where we will see the selected control turn blue, then click on the hosted plugins parameter we wish to control. We can also do this physically by controlling our UC1 hardware to link the parameters, making the mapping process fast and intuitive. Then once we've mapped all the parameters to our controller, we're ready to go. And next time we open this plugin with 360 Link, these preferences will be auto saved under the user mapping, so we can get started straight away. In some plugins, we may find the parameter names are linked to module numbers such as Slate Digital's VMR, so to rename any parameters to make them easier to see within Link, we can edit these by double clicking on the name and renaming it however we feel appropriate. If we want to undo a link or clear all links and begin again, we can right click on a parameter and select clear link or clear all links and continue mapping our plugin. So the benefits of 360 Link are obvious when working with the UC1 controller, but Link also offers some fantastic extended workflows to the UF1 and UF8 controllers too. If we jump over to the plugin mixer layer in 360 and on our UF1, we can see now in the screen that the extended functions controls hidden in the UC1 are available directly from the UF1 screen with the buttons across the top and the VPOTs controlling the encoders below. So if we carefully map our hosted plugin with the saturation, output trim and comp mix controls, we can have direct hands-on control access with the UF1, allowing us to access these faster. And for those of you who don't yet own a UC1, all of the 360 link controls are available on the UF1 with the pots mapped to the VPOT controls across the bottom and switches on the soft keys at the top. Likewise, on the UF8, if we work again in the plugin mixer layer, all of the selected functionality is available directly to us across all 360 enabled channels, allowing for super fast control of our mix whether we're using SSL 4KB, 4KE and Channel Strip 2 plugins or with 360 link with any hosted plugin in our session. 
When I select a control on any plugin, this same mapped parameter is available across my entire mix. So balancing settings across different channels is elegant and allows me to control multiple plugins at the same time, just as if I was working on a large format analog console. So by now, I hope you've got a really good idea of how SSL Link can empower your sessions to add more hands-on control across your entire mix. But it's also worth noting that you're not limited to using just one 360 Link plugin per track. Instead, you're able to add multiple instances on the same channel, allowing hands-on control of every plugin in your mix. The plugins will simply stack, so whichever plugin is selected, your 360 controller will be ready to go, and moving between them will be as easy as scrolling to the next plugin. Another really useful workflow trick if you're working with a plugin mixer layer and a VST3 enabled DAW is to add empty link plugins on channels where you're not using any channel strip plugins or hosted plugins. By doing so, this allows the mixer layer here to conform to your DAW mixer so you can quickly switch between DAW and plugin mixer faders and will reduce CPU usage compared to using 360 channel strips to fill the spaces. Now you've had a chance to get to see 360 Link in action, the next step is to download it and begin getting to grips with all your favourite plugins now literally at your fingertips. For more information on SSL 360 Link, just head over to SSL's website support pages to check out the manual which will expand upon everything we've covered here so far, as well as more information on the entire SSL 360 ecosystem. But for now, until next time, thank you for joining me, peace out.